My name is uh, Digivigil, and I've been drinking the Kool-Aid for more years than I care to discuss, at least here. Uh, this will be a Microsoft-centric talk. Um, if that scares anyone, that's a warning right there. How many of you are working in a predominantly Windows-based uh, environment? Wow. And we're all at DEF CON. That's awesome. <laughs> I don't feel alone anymore. <laughs> um, I was going to sign up for some sort of anonymous group 12-step program. <laughs> Hasn't happened yet. Okay. So this talk is going to give a brief introduction of SharePoint. I don't know if that's going to be valuable for most of the attendees here if they're familiar with it. And then I'll go into uh, the SharePoint Knowledge Network uh, after that. MOS 2007, which stands for Microsoft Office SharePoint Server, uh, but that's pretty long, so MOS is the common vernacular that we use, um, is a development platform, a development framework it is a portal framework, and it's also a collaboration suit. Microsoft targets this in two completely different ways. They sell it to corporations as an out-of-the-box portal solution, and they sell it to developers as a framework that they can build portal solutions on. In most cases, companies will buy it and deploy it, and they will work up to a certain point, and they will discover that, hey, we can't, how do we do this? And that's where consultants come in. Uh, and say, we can help you do that for a certain amount of money. And then they go back to Microsoft and say, well, you said you could do everything. You can. <laughs> you just need help. That's the uh, service provider part of the Microsoft ecology. There are two versions. One is free and has been wrapped with Windows since 2003 and certainly is in 2008. It's Windows SharePoint Services. It includes most of the collaboration features, but none of the portal features. The API, if you're targeting building something for SharePoint and <laughs> you want it to be free, then there's a lot of the API you can't use because it's specific to the portal version. The portal version is licensed and is fairly expensive. I'm not sure what the, what the newest price is, but I remember 50K being bandied about for a single license. Um, I'm not certain about that price. So what does SharePoint do? It does document management. Um, it, in several places that I've been, it's replaced Documentum. It's certainly not at Documentum's levels at any uh, conceivable point, but it does document management. It replaces file shares, things like that. It has news groups, discussion groups. It can do simple lists. It's, you can create tables. You can tell in which columns it has, but you cannot reference one table from another table. It has no integrity on it. And it certainly cannot scale very well to large amounts of data. Um, it can do content management, task management. It has a very simple wiki um, functionality that you can use. It has an ability to build an XML schema so you can show data from other sources through SharePoint by defining the schema in XML. It's interesting. Uh, Excel services actually allows you to have online hosted Excel sheets that people can interact with and they don't require Excel on the local box to use it. All of these solutions have fairly good functionality, but there are other solutions out there for each one of them that does a lot better at each one of them. So SharePoint covers a lot of ground, but none of it very deeply. So why do people buy it? Um, it's a consistent portal solution that you can use for all parts of the enterprise if you have the money for it and the developers to help you do that. And it's, one, it's meant as a one-stop shop. Why should we care about SharePoint? More and more companies will be adopting SharePoint, and a lot of them already have. Microsoft has been investing very heavily in promoting SharePoint, and they are spending an awful lot of efforts evangelizing it as a solution to their developers. We will see SharePoint deployed in more and more Microsoft-centric shops, and it replaces a lot of Java-based frameworks, at least in what I've seen. To be honest, I don't know exactly why it is so successfully been deployed. Microsoft has an awesome sales machine, that's all I can say. Um, a lot of the people who have adopted it, once they've gone through with all of it, they're like, well, it not really that good, and what we had worked pretty well, <laughs> but it's out there. Mm, yeah, we did that. 
So the Moss Knowledge Network, the title of this talk, was an extension to SharePoint 2007 in the beta edition, and it came out at least in an RC1, no, RC0. For some reason, that was never publicly disclosed, at least not that I saw. Microsoft never released a full production version of the, of the Moss Knowledge Network. Um, they had fairly large customers that had implemented the parts of it that were released, but for some reason, it never fully went um, in. Some of you might know that SharePoint 2010 is right around the corner, which means three to six months in Microsoft um, time. The beta has, no, whatever is pre-beta has been released to certain vendors and certain providers. Um, they are not allowed to talk about what's in it at this moment, but it's relatively likely that the next version of SharePoint will contain functionality taken straight from the knowledge network and implemented. Newer versions of Windows Server and the Microsoft operating system will probably also contain fragments of what the knowledge network had in it. Uh, for a while they talked about having this functionality in Windows 7 and I have not seen that in the releases that they've had so far. Microsoft decided to create um, the knowledge network based on the fact that most information in companies is undocumented and it's difficult for the organization to know who has the knowledge within and who has the specific knowledge that is needed so that people can easily collaborate and connect. The data sources that the knowledge network we use to harvest information from includes email. Team sites is an artifact of SharePoint. Um, websites, IM contacts, contact list, profiles in SharePoint, my sites is another SharePoint artifact, active directory relationships, managers, uh, divisions, things like that, distribution lists, and speculations were for extending it into IM traffic and uh, integration with the phone system. It uses these sources of data to calculate social distance between different parts, different employees basically, and map out the knowledge that it can find through all of these sources that they have. It's about connecting people. It's about, it's Microsoft's first foray into trying to create an automatic social networking that doesn't require each user to connect to each other in a manual way, but actually will forge these relationships out of the data that it can analyze and find. It is meant to help the users to collaborate and discover, yeah. It's, it's a client server product, but it has a component called the Seeker. Some of the client components will actually run inside of Outlook, uh, inside of your email client um, on your desktop, and it will constantly be feeding information back to the server, which will store it, and the Seeker will index it. The seeker will aggregate profiles and try to discover who knows who, who knows what, when, why, and so forth. The relationship data sources are input for the knowledge network correlation store, which is uh, the seeker, which is surfaced through the browser. You can actually go through the API for this and develop your own custom solutions based on the data that's stored in the correlation store. For those of you familiar with an old Microsoft product called Site Server, which then came out in Site Server Commerce Edition and has had a couple of others. There's actually parts of that that was part of the knowledge network. Um, Site Server 3 Commerce Edition had something called a profile which was meant to target customers with data that would be uh, useful for them. Um, <laughs> dang it. So Amazon has this in a great deal today. You bought something and they can see that based on what other people have bought, you're probably interested in buying these six other items. And sometimes that can go horribly wrong. But the predicting algorithm there, um, Microsoft had a similar thing going in um, Commerce Server and now in the Knowledge Network. It is not meant to really 
tell you who is an expert in an organization because that's already fairly well known and established. The idea is to establish secondary and tertiary sources of information or sources of information that you did not know that the company had. This is for a high level for managers, things like that. Or if you're stuck behind a deadline and you're working late and the guy who's the head of it is not available for whatever reason, is out golfing, uh, you might find other people who could help you. The wonderful quote that I found somewhere was to organically discover expertise to enable an organization to make better choices quicker. And that's obviously a marketing involvement somewhere in there because no engineer came up with that. I found this whole thing from when I first learned about it to be frightening. What are they meaning when they say expertise? Ah. Um, they mean that they can find sources, that they can, it's an attempt to discover who knows what. So if you have X documents, no, 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 based on their email, based on their IMs, based on the documents that are stored that they have tagged uh, in SharePoint or other places where you can find it. So it's a data mining process to try to discover what you know and what your friends know, and in a network sense, what everybody knows. That made sense? Thank you. Um, what popped into my mind when I started reading about it and first heard about it was this total information awareness that we heard about for a while from the government. Um, I think I read about two implementations that the government tried to have of it. One got scrapped. What happened to the other one, I don't know, because I'm certainly not privy to that kind of information, except through various um, conspiracy theory websites, which I never visit, of course. Uh, the idea of total information awareness was to tie together all the separate pieces of data that the government might have of you and form a holistic profile to try to figure out who was going to do bad things. Um, some people seem to protest that this was taking place, and they raised quite a lot of hoo-ha. The interesting thing for me is not really if the government succeeded in creating that program or not, because I'll never know, but I'm interested in knowing what companies are doing, because companies certainly have the same interest, and that can be Google, that can be Amazon, that can be Facebook or MySpace. They are interested in harvesting all the information they can find about you, and then try to build a model of what they can sell you, or sell your information to other people if they can aggregate it in a proper manner. Now, that said, I tried to include a couple of slides here now on Microsoft's attempt to mitigate the worries that I tried to outline. Um, they thought that there could be customers that had privacy concerns involving um, the knowledge network. That's pretty impressive. I can't imagine what the EULA is like for this product. And they aimed to address these concerns by striking the right balance among utility, simplicity, and privacy. This would have to be sold so that the manager who bought it understands the return on investment. And the return on investment comes from being able to mine as much data as possible. If they actually make it so that people can easily turn off what information is being mined, there is no ROI that they can really talk about here. So I'm very curious, once this, the bits for 2010 comes out, if they do indeed include this, how much of the privacy aspects that they promoted have actually been implemented. They have five levels of privacy that they identified in the product. Um, that goes from just me, my manager, my colleagues, my work group, everyone. Chances are this will be hidden in some very obscure configuration in your profile somewhere, and finding it will be a challenge. And I'm pretty sure that the company will not do its best to tell you about it. If you think about what happens over the network, a lot of people send personal emails at work. This could go into it as well. Um, I think it could be used a lot to identify who's spending time doing what as well and help them make rational decisions for uh, saving money in the personnel department. 
So Knowledge Network can be seen as a technology preview and it was pulled and they never explained why it was pulled and they had a lot of big customers who were very interested in it. It is indicated that it will be included in the new versions and since they have this product and it's, thank you, and it's pretty much done, I'm wondering if they don't have a much better version of it running behind Bing and to mine all of the data that they're collecting through Hotmail, no sorry, live, no sorry, Bing Mail. Is it Bing Mail now? I, I don't know what it is anymore. <laughs> and the bigger question that I have from a much more secretive organization than Microsoft is what the hell is Google running behind the scenes on all the data and all the ad tracking that they have. That was my talk. I have five minutes left if there are any questions. Parts of it will definitely be included in 2010. How deep it goes, I don't know. And if I knew, I couldn't talk about <laughs> legally. <laughs> yes? Not that I'm aware of, no. Um, I, I've not seen any, there are no components of it that should be a part of that. Sorry? Yeah. Yeah. It could be. Yes. Do you know anything about like the theoretical framework that's used to make these kind of inferences about who knows what and its products, like Asian inference or? How they is so they like to talk. Yeah. Not in any depth, no. Uh, they, there was very little that was released about it. They talk about social distance and they do define some metrics for how they develop that, but it's very, very light. It's not technical in detail. Um, it's actually fairly strange how mature the product became and how little was ever divulged about it. I mean, you could actually download it for a short period of time, but the documentation was certainly not very good around it. And then I spent quite a lot of time trying to find those bits before this because I had intended to have a demo of it. <laughs> and those bits are hard to come by. I had them, but that VM is lost a long time ago. <laughs>